Today, we are going to go over some champions that desperately need some love and some attention from Riot. Keep in mind that not every champion on this list has a bad win rate. Some definitely do, such as LeBlanc, who has the second worst win rate in mid lane, but she's still an average pick rate and is pretty difficult to execute. Some champions on this list, like Kog'Ma, have a very high win rate for their role. Kog'Ma has the third highest win rate for ADCs, but he actually has the lowest pick rate in the game, with a lower pick rate than both Kalista and Yasuo ADC. A win rate is not always indicative of how good a champion could be. With the case of Cog, he's probably being played by players who are good at Kog'Ma and or main him, or they're picking him in very specific situations, such as having a Lulu support, which he will always have good synergy with, regardless of the champion's current state. Now if you're looking for a polar opposite example, something on the total opposite end of the spectrum, that would have to be Akali. A champion who has literally the worst win rate in the game is permabanned at the competitive level. Players who are so good at Akali, who are high challenger or LCS professional players, make her look like the best champion in the game. If you can pilot her, she's incredibly broken. If you're bronze, she's incredibly terrible. One more note before we start is that we will be looking at champions today that definitely need some attention, but are not necessarily the worst champions in the game and need reworks. I already covered champions with massive game breaking and balancing issues in another video, talking about champions like Kalista and Ryze, who need a lot more than just one buff. This video is about champions who have been neglected for a little bit too long, or nerfed just a bit too much, but potentially only need something as small as one buff or one quality of life change to bring them back into the meta. Let's start with the aforementioned ADC, Kog'Ma. Now, this champion suffers from poor item strength. Because his items like Blade of the Ruined King, Rageblade, Runins, and Wit's End have all been changed and nerfed in some way as a result of other champions being too good, it's left Kog'Ma a step behind. His lack of mobility in a meta of Talons, Akalis, and Rivens doesn't really help his case either. Earlier this season, Vayne and Kai'Sa were completely abusing Rageblade, so the item had to be nerfed and changed. Wit's End is now almost exclusively a melee-only item. After its changes, it's become a great first or second item for champions like Yasuo and Aurelia, and while the item does work on ranged champions, it's not nearly as effective. Kog is pretty strong with his partner in crime of Lulu, but without her, he's almost always a poor choice compared to other scaling ADCs. The thing that feels bad is that the champion is almost required to be paired with Lulu in order to even feel good to play. And this is a problem that Zaya and Rakan have never had. Even though Zaya and Rakan are designed in a way that makes them better with one another, they've never really been so bad that they can't be played without the other. It's kinda as if Kog and Lulu together are a B or sometimes even A tier bot lane that can get really far ahead if things go well early in mid game, but without their pairing, individually they're both D tier champs. You can make him work, but if you need a scaling ADC, you're almost always better off picking Jinx or Twitch, who at least have a slightly better laning phase and synergize even better with some of the meta supports right now, like an invisible bot lane Twitch and Pike. A suggested buff might be looking at his AP builds, not necessarily the mid lane tier and Emax Kog'Maw, but maybe the AP ratios he has and his attack speed buff. This could potentially allow him to build a Nasher's Tooth, which is an item that has not been heavily nerfed because of other ADCs, and also lets him fulfill a niche of being more of an AP damage ADC, similar to Corky in that way or an attack speed version of Kai'Sa. It would give him a spot in team comps that are heavy on attack damage and allow him to be better in a 1 item spike of Nashers, or even better on a 2 item spike of Nashers and Rageblade. The inspiration of this video today comes from a post that made front page of the League of Legends subreddit. There was an Ivern main touching on some of the potential changes that Riot has in store for Ivern, and talking about how he wasn't a big fan of them. Ivern is a champion that no matter what you do, he will not be popular. He's a really unique champion that I do love to play myself, but he's not that interesting for a lot of people. I think he's one of the few champions in the game that we have where at times he can be really strong, but people think he sucks simply because no one ever plays him. His nickname of Jungle Janna is probably not going to go away anytime soon, and while a lot of people find Janna astoundingly boring, he does win a lot of his games and can feel very annoying to play against, similar to Janna. Right now he's in an okay spot. 
but he could use some love. A massive reason why the champion does feel bad to play is because the AI on Daisy absolutely sucks. It's horrible. The Ivern mains have been begging for quality of life changes on her and really want to see some recoding work done by Riot, which I think is actually exactly what the champion needs. There were some potential changes listed to make Ivern permanently ranged, and I think this is a decent quality of life buff. The Reddit post did hit on how this comes with some unintended consequences that aren't the best for the champion, but I think that making him a real ranged champion arguably is worth it for what you might lose, but of course I see their point. Ivern is not a champion that needs number buffs, because in the past he's been completely overboard in high elo and pro play when he's overbuffed in compensation for being unpopular, which isn't really fair to Ivern. That's just a flaw in his design in the community for not thinking he's fun to play, which is why I'd mostly like to see him just get some quality of life. Now, the next champion we will be talking about today is Shaco. To start off, I have to say, and I have to admit, I really hate this champion. I am probably the biggest Shaco hater on the planet, and I dislike how constantly the Shaco mains complain about their champion being bad. He will have like a 62% win rate and have 15 challenger Shaco one tricks, and they'll be spamming Reddit on how bad their champion is. But finally, I think they have a point, and I think they have a good reason to be upset. This is basically the Kellen coefficient. If I'm saying that Shaco might need some love, then you really know maybe he's not that good. One of the biggest indirect nerfs to Shaco was when Tiamat had its cost increased in order to relieve some power from Aurelia, Talon, and Jax in lane, and champions like Rengar and Rek'Sai in the jungle. Tiamat was core for a lot of these champions and was really overpowered, but in turn, this hurt Shaco pretty bad. The biggest problem with the champion is not actually the fact that he does no damage, which is a common complaint among the Shaco mains. I think he definitely does enough damage, but it takes too long because of what you have to max. Back when Riot did the Assassin rework and update, the main goal for every champion was to give them more counterplay, be less frustrating to play against, and have more time to react. With Shaco, obviously the most annoying part about his kit is his stealth, which used to always last 3.5 seconds on his deceive. The most important change they gave to him is that you're now forced to max your deceive instead of your E, because you only start with a 1.5 second stealth, scaling into 4.5 seconds. 1.5 seconds is just completely crap, and his famous level 2 or level 3 cheese ganks barely work anymore because you don't even have enough time to get behind people for your backstab. There are some Shakos that are maxing E now and winning a few more games, but it still feels pretty bad to be 1.5 seconds of stealth for that long. Shaco now scales better than he ever has, and is kinda known for scaling now rather than the early game, but there are better scaling junglers than him. It leaves him in an awkward spot where he doesn't really have a place. He's not the best early game ganker anymore, but instead he now scales, but he doesn't scale better than the likes of Karthus or Master Yi. So if you want to be a farm heavy jungler, why not just pick the other two champs? A decent option may be shrinking the scaling on his Q, where you would start with a 2 second stealth, but maxing your Q would only give you stealth up to 4 seconds, not 4.5. This means that in the early game you would have half a second more to gank at level 2 or level 3, and you could also just put 3 points into your Q and then max E, or even 3 points into E and then max Q. It would allow you to be really strong around level 10 or 11, and he would most likely have a solid place as one of, if not the best mid game jungler, with more successful ganks early game, he could afford to buy that crucial Tiamat buy a bit easier. As we mentioned before, Lulu and Kog'Maw are great as a pair, but not individually. Right now, Lulu is easily the worst enchanter in the game, with every other cutesy tootsy support being stronger. Karma, Lux, Sona, Janna, Nami, Yumi, and Soraka are all better than Lulu, which puts her in a weird spot. Unless you're a Lulu enthusiast, why would you ever pick this champ? You might say that she has good poke, but Janna and Karma with Arcade Comet have better poke in lane than she does. You might say that she's a good solo laner too because she's so flexible, but Karma is a lot better at that too. You might even say that she's the best peeling support in the game and scales so well with Polymorph, but so do Nami, Soraka, Yumi, and Sona. Specifically, Soraka, Yumi, and Sona are almost unbeatable laking. 
Lulu was so overpowered in the past, when her shield lasted for 6 full seconds, that Riot would end up gutting it, to now it's less than half of its former power. Ever since these Lulu nerfs, she's really struggled to be that oppressive, assassin blocking, annoying shielder, and disengager. When she's strong, her main strength is just how valuable polymorph and wild growth are as abilities, and shielding and buffing someone for 6 seconds was just the icing on the cake. I would like to see a way for Lulu to be a bit more interactive, but she can be buffed in other ways to compensate. You could lower the duration and increase the cooldown on Polymorph, that way a good Lulu player has to use it perfectly, and on exactly the right person, but instead we could buff her Q with both damage and cooldown, allowing her to play more aggressively and poke out her opponents. I'm thinking along the same lines of how Riot gave Janna her mini rework that now she can max W and take Comet, and be a full on poke champion and deal pretty good damage. If Riot's philosophy is that she doesn't want to be a good solo laner and not buff her Q, we could just increase her base stats, that way she can get out of lane a little bit easier and isn't completely punished by Pike and Nautilus lanes. LeBlanc is a champion that is very dear to my heart, as she is my second most played champion of all time. She was very strong for an extremely long time, from pre-rework, to the rework where she would take Gunblade, to post-revert where she was very strong, to receiving nerf after nerf after nerf. In the last couple of patches, she started to get some love, with a buff to her E already being not too bad, and now we have a buff to her Q. These are a reasonable start, and she might need more than this, but only time will tell if this will be enough. After countless nerfs, it left her in a spot of being 100% required to completely smash the early game and make the enemy team FF at 15, because as soon as anyone completed two items, she started to fall off. The biggest counter to LeBlanc is just playing so safe and defensive that she's never able to snowball. Something like a Zed mid lane can rush first item Merc Treads, take double MR shards, and take Nullifying Orb and render LeBlanc useless. She's still pretty good for smurfing, and really good LeBlanc players like Bob Quinn can make her work very well, but ultimately she's one of the weaker assassins in the game at the moment. But at least Riot recognizes this, and is trying to slowly bring her back. Victor is one of those champions that randomly became good once people switched roles and build. Out of nowhere, without any direct buffs to Victor for a very long time, he became a god tier kleptomancy top laner who built AP tank items and was unbeatable in a side lane. He will still situationally see pro play in the top lane when someone just wants to beat a melee champion like Jax, but honestly, he's not that good. In the mid lane, he suffers from being so easy to gank and taking way too long to scale, so you never really have any pressure. He has horrible mana problems until he gets his hex core going, and you're almost forced to be perfect at the game and farm every single last hit to get your first upgrade since it costs so much. The reason the first upgrade was nerfed to being more than 1000 gold is that back in the day in Season 6, Victor was heavily prioritized at the pro level as a safe, heavy wave clear, heavy scaling option that wasn't too bad early game once you reached level 6 and got your first upgrade at only 1000 gold. Pros just farmed up until Boots and Hexcore and then became a really good champion and of course he scaled into a 6 item teamfighting god. If you manage to get to late game, there's not really a problem with Victor. He's the same old same old scaling king. But he takes far too long in a very early game meta that chances are you'll just be playing against a Talon mid, probably die for first blood, probably get camped by Lee Sin, probably start the game 0-6 and lose every single dragon and scuttlecrab fight while your jungler asks why Talon is roaming and you're stuck farming a tower. Locking in Trundle right now is basically trolling. There are very few spots that this champion fits into team comps. In recent times, he was pretty strong as a jungler, as a counterpick to the tank jungle meta due to his alt stealing resistances. He also does act as a good counterpick to Bruiser's top lane since he steals their AD and has good sustain. But again, he still can't find a place. Even though Sejuani is strong in the jungle, and even though Ribbon is strong in the top lane, Trundle doesn't really counter either of them anymore due to the number of nerfs he's received. Trundle's been back and forth between being meta and a really strong fighter in both jungle and top, and then back to absolutely useless. It's a core problem that he's way too good when he does get to counter tank junglers and bruisers top lane, but then they have to nerf him, and then he doesn't really counter anybody anymore because he's too weak stat-wise. It ends up being a slippery slope that he can easily be one of the best champions in the game, get nerfed once, and go back down to the worst champion in the game, without really much in between. 
Maybe a better way of balancing Trundle would be looking to push him back into the support position more. We've seen him a good amount in support over the last couple of years, and maybe we could look to try and bring him back into that direction and give him a mini rework. For example, what if instead of him stealing AD with his Q-Bite, which is a melee ranged ability designed to shut down melee fighters, if instead if he lands his E and gets the mini knockup, he causes the enemy to lose AD for a few seconds. This way he's not forced to get into melee range of a Draven. Instead, maybe his Q could heal him and another ally if it successfully bites a minion to death, instead of it being on his passive. This way, the Emax Trundle support could stand at range and use his pillar to both engage and disengage, and his Q could be used as more of a supportive tool. His ultimate is already decent for a support because he can steal stats from the tank support or the tank jungler ganking him. I think pushing him in the direction of a support is more fair, and would allow him to actually have a spot as a tank support, rather than being way too oppressive in the jungle and top lane when he ends up countering those champions. Finally, let's finish up today with Maokai. This champion is one of the weaker champions in the game, and is probably one of the weakest tanks. Every other tank is viable in some capacity. Poppy is a decent top laner after the buffs, and can be played in the jungle. Scion isn't the best full tank at the moment, but he's actually okay as a full lethality champion. Singed isn't in his best state ever, but he does counter top laners with mobility. Malphite got his mini rework and is kind of underrated. Volibear and Tom Kench top lane are solid picks. You get the idea. Along with Dr. Mundo, I think Maokai has to be the worst tank in the game. Being honest, his ult just sucks. I think anyone who adores Maokai would rather have the old ultimate day in and day out. I think Maokai is a really cool thematic champion, with the Ent and his ult being a full lane wide, but he's not really fully realized. I think his W is just too problematic and way too easy to execute, and his saplings aren't nearly as interesting as they could be. He should be on the list for another mini rework, and I would love to see him being pushed back into the jungle role where I think he feels more at home. Top lane, he's really just an annoying broken tank that wins trades for free and becomes unkillable, and has been a nightmare for several years to balance. But as a jungler, he's overall more fair in general except for his ganks being too good with W. I'd like to see Riot try again with the mini tank reworks, and they've already reverted Zax's R, so maybe they'll look to see what they can do with Maokai very soon. Anyway, this is just my list today of champions that are looking to get some love. Like I said, I already did a video on which champions are the worst in the game by far, and that was covering the lowest of the low champions that were in desperate need of reworks, not just buffs. And if you want to see that one, you can click the link in the description down below. Let me know what you thought of this video and leave constructive feedback and your opinion in the comments down below. I try to read every comment on my videos. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.